I took on a little project for a neighbor who lives down the street from me. Jerry is his name. Jerry has a couple of older Skidoo Summit snowmobiles. These are 800s from the year 2001. They're actually great little sleds. They're old enough that you probably aren't going to spend a whole lot of time in the deep powder with these guys. Back in the day you would have, but by today's standard, these are really not quite up to snuff with the, with the newer stuff, and that's okay. Jerry and his wife like to ride these mostly on groomed trails. I think Jerry probably has me by about 25 years, and his wife would be about the same. So I think it's fantastic that they're getting out. I think it's just really cool. So they like to ride these two. They're a match set, which makes it kind of convenient. The problem is that these snowmobiles just don't start very well. In fact, you could pretty well pull on them all day long, and it just isn't going to start. Probably not about the winter. Yeah, you wear yourself out. There's a little bit of a nostalgia that goes along with these snowmobiles. I grew up in an area where you pretty well had to have a snowmobile just to survive. And these are actually newer than most of those, but I have some fond memories of this era of snowmobile. So if nothing else, perhaps just a little bit out of nostalgia, I told Jerry I'd take a look at them. These machines were carbureted back in the day. Is that the likely problem? Usually it is, that's my default position. But once the machine starts, it keeps running and it runs okay. The further complication though is once it gets hot, it's probably not gonna start again. Even with the ether, it can be difficult to start. Now that's according to Jerry. I don't know, I haven't had him out so I couldn't say firsthand. But that changes the dynamic of the problem just a little bit. As a natural course of business, I started out with the carburetors and went through them. They are pristine. Carburetors looked great. Next idea, could it be maybe a fuel pump? Well, probably not. What starts an engine with a carburetor out of the gate is the fuel content in the float bowl of the carburetor. So if the carburetor has fuel in it, then the pump just really doesn't even make any difference. So could it be the fuel pump? Maybe, but probably not. How about weak spark? It's a possibility. It doesn't quite meet the description, but perhaps. How about low compression? Now that's actually an interesting one. So we got the compression gauge out and within three poles, it's showing 120 pounds. Seems to me like that would be sufficient. Well, it seems to me that I might be wrong. I called up a buddy who happens to own a Skidoo dealership and asked him if he could stretch his mind back 20 years and remember the 2001 era 800cc Summit engine. He confirmed that 120 pounds of pressure, even though it's consistent across both cylinders, is probably marginal for this era of snowmobile. So what do you do? Look, the snowmobiles are old enough that you really don't want to put a lot of time and effort into it. You probably can't even find a mechanic that's willing to take these. The dealer won't. Folks just don't really want to work on them anymore. Furthermore, they're really probably not worth enough money to justify a full top-end rebuild. I'm talking about pulling the cylinder, having it replated and honed, new pistons, new rings, new bearings. You might put as much money into it doing that as the snowmobile's worth. So does low compression mean that the machine is now a giant paperweight? I'm hoping not. I have a new set of rings and a gasket kit. We're talking about a $75 parts list. And with any luck, you'll get to meet Jerry here. At some point, he'll want to come pick these up. And assuming we get them running, maybe he'll pick them up with a smile. We'll see. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to pull the air box. I'm going to pull the carburetors. Then I'm going to pull the exhaust off the front. Then I've got to drain the coolant out of the engine. From there, I should be able to lift the, the cylinder head off and pull the cylinders off. One of the exhaust manifold bolts is being a little bit stubborn, but the other seven came. So I'll focus on that one when it's a little more accessible over on the bench. We can pull the cylinders just the way it is. The head seems to be in good shape. No heat marks, apparent burn spots. It does show signs of incomplete combustion. The cylinders are separate on this machine, which is actually kind of convenient as well. Lift each cylinder off, and assuming that the cylinders are in reasonably good condition and the pistons are in reasonably good condition, emphasizing the word reasonably here, we don't really want to do a full top end, we'll reuse those parts as is and then put new rings on, this, on the pistons looking for a higher compression ratio. From there, we'll clean everything up, reassemble, and see what we've got. At a glance, the cylinders look okay. Now, to be sure, if this were a newer machine, and I'd put this much effort into it, I would probably get the cylinders replated, just because it probably costs between two and three hundred dollars per cylinder to get them redone. But once you put this much effort into it, you might as well have a brand new engine. 
in this case, where the machines are older, not worth that much, and they're not being ridden hard, I think new rings probably is sufficient. Maybe some replacement pistons, we'll see. Well, there is some, there's some light scarring on that one. Yeah, we need a new piston for sure. If you look right there, you can see that scar. It's deep enough that my thumbnail catches on it. I really don't like that. And we could potentially buff it out, but I would replace it if it were me. The side's got a little bit too palpable, not as deep, but a little wider. Yeah, I really don't like that piston. This side is much better, the PTO side, but I would, I would just get the set and replace them both. You can see some minor scarring on the cylinder wall right here. It is not palpable. It does not catch my thumbnail. Down inside there may be a little bit more. And so if this were a new snowmobile and I wanted to be able to run it hard, I would get that replated. I think though this, if I were you, I think I would leave that alone and just put a new piston in it. After talking it over with Jerry, we decided to proceed as planned. So we've ordered new pistons and those showed up. I thought that would be enough for me to get this thing put back together and on the trail. However, when I pulled the wrist pins out of the connecting rods, the wrist pin bearings came apart. The stock bearings that go in the top end of the con rod that the wrist pin slides through, that needle bearing is uncaged and that's a pain in the keister. <laughs> I just really don't want to deal with that. And actually, not even sure how I would. You can probably grease it together, but I just didn't even want to fiddle around with risking dropping a needle down into the crank and losing it. And not, it so, no, I ordered some caged needle bearings for the wrist pins. They're not hard to come by, but they're not simple either. They're a little bit of a unique size, so you can't just go to your local bearing house and pick these up. You have to order them from some kind of a supplier. They're available, they're all aftermarket, and they're great. They're, they're robust, I like this. This will, this will go together really clean, so I'm excited about that. But that set us back a week, so it's been a little bit. And then, just to make sure that I delayed things as long as possible, my wife and I took a little one-week excursion down to the Costa Rica. We spent a couple of days in La Fortuna, exploring around the volcano Arenal, and doing some zip lining and some river rafting and playing in the rainforest. And then we spent a few days down on the northwest beach in the area of Playa Grande by Tamarindo and got to do some tubing in the river up there. We hiked up into a waterfall with some beautiful clear water and spent a week doing something we've never done before. So while that was a lot of fun, wouldn't, wouldn't trade it for anything, it set us back just that much further on this project. So we're, we're ready to get this one done. I'm sure Jerry's ready to go for a ride too. Everybody probably has their own little tricks to make this stuff simple. Well, as simple as it can be. What I've done is put the little circ clip inside the piston on one side, fed the wrist pin in through the other, just enough that it hasn't started closing the gap in the center of the piston. That allows me to put it down over the top of the connecting rod, then push the wrist pin through. Once that's through, I cover up the crank to make sure that I don't drop the circ clip down into the crank case. One down. Okay. That one got deflected. Okay, next, gaskets. One of the nicest things about snowmobiles in this era is that you can completely rebuild the engine without pulling it out. Well, that should just about do it. It's that moment. Oh yeah. 
So you know just... what's, what's funny about how you say that huh. is that the neighbors that I had a few neighbors help me build this. Sure. And we watched it, the video. That was fun. So it, it gained a nickname. Is that where you, is that, did I put that in, did, was there any mention? Oh, no. The Garage Mahal is kind oh, of. No. Well, if it was, I didn't heard. hear it, but. That yeah, I don't, I don't think that one, it, I don't think it had any audio in it. It just had some music to it. Or yeah, something. I think it was actually his wife that named it the Taj Mahal Garage. The Taj Mahal Garage. Yeah. So it's the, the Garage Mahal. Uh -huh, and uh -huh. I love it, except for one problem. Hmm. It's just too small. Oh, my God. <laughs> don't, don't we, don't we understand? When, Jerry, have you ever heard somebody say, I love my house, but darn it, the garage is just too darn big. I know. It doesn't happen Never. that way. Well, do me a favor, Mindy, come stand right here. Okay. This is this is Jerry and Mindy, my neighbors that I got to there? meet because of these snowmobiles. So, hi. That's been kind of the fun thing is, I, I, you've lived in that house how long? Ten years. ten years. About ten years. And yeah. never even hadn't even met you until now. So. And you were nice enough just to come to our house and say, "Yeah, well, I'll do that." <laughs> and by the way, I'd like to pay you some some money for for doing this. So you just tell me what I owe you, because well, it's worth it to me, and I'm still learning from you, so it is worth it to me. I've heard your wife makes one heck of a cherry pie. Oh, here we go. How many cherry pies can you make? This, <laughs> this is worth a lot of cherry pies. <laughs>